Ladies and gentlemen, may Boys I introduce and girls. May I introduce to you the lovely Nisha loves it. And me. How you doing? If you're watching this on the replay, you can still leave your comments. You can ask your questions in the comments below. We'll check back on this video every few hours, every day or so, and we'll try to answer every question we can. Thought you were live on the wrong one for a minute. Nope, I'm on the right one. I, I like, promise. Oh, hey Amanda, how's it going? Hi. Are we on the right one? Are, Hi, we, Jared. are we? Yeah, no, we're on the right one. Thank <laughs> God. I really thought we weren't. I was Good. like, uh, hi from Michigan. Hi, Kristen. Hi, Jessica. Hi, Sherry. I'm trying to see it, but I don't see it. It's at the top. It's all the way to the top. Mm, it's above the pin post? It was the other day. That's it's weird. like they changed something and put it out there. I don't know. Okay, well, I can't see it. So don't worry. That's about. okay. You don't need to see it. Why so, you see it anyway? hi from Puerto Rico. Hi. Bakiria. Oh, what a name. Very nice. I love it. Yeah. All right. What would you guys like to talk about this evening? We've got a few ideas of things that we want to talk that are in the news or that I'm uh, working on a video for. You got anything that you want to talk about in Fortnite. particular? <laughs> Fortnite, yeah. I've, I've become a victim of Fortnite. We've discovered Fortnite. It's a video game, and uh, I think it's pretty addictive. It's going to be so a problem. It's probably going to be a problem for a yeah. minute. I may have to just... Yeah, we missed you guys. We haven't. I guess we hadn't really talked talked yeah. on a Sunday since we were in Lon before oh, that's London. True. Yeah, so, that's true. That's yeah, true. We're glad to be back. It's really good to be back, honestly. Um, we kind of didn't have that great of an experience. Yeah. We've already been to London one time, so... It was, yeah. I don't know, and we felt like crummy, crummy, crumminess. Yeah, we, we, we sinned a little our first couple of days there, and we paid for it the entire trip. Mm -hmm. Somebody said we look again. refreshed from the, it's not from the vacation. No, it's from, <laughs> it's from, it's the, from the keto. <laughs> the post-vacation getting yeah. back on keto, that's exactly. Yeah, exactly. Teeny tiny Rhode Island. Hey, Shannon from Rhode Island. <laughs> how you doing? Very nice. Okay, so. <laughs> I love how he's all of a sudden <laughs> doing this how you doing thing. I don't like know, he... it just comes out. I don't know. You never know what's going to come out. Mm. Yeah, that's right. Don't forget that. So I saw, you don't forget it. <laughs> I saw in the news today that they've recalled 207 million eggs because of a salmonella scare. And I'm going to tell you guys how to never have to worry about that, okay? If you'll post on your Facebook page, hey, does anybody raise their own chickens and have extra eggs they'd like to sell? Because anytime you buy any poultry or produce or anything like that from a from a, a huge corporate farm or a corporate a corporation they're going to mass market stuff and they're going to cookie cutter stuff and they're going to cut corners and they're going to use chemicals and you're always going to have the risk of salmonella or some other infection or some chemical exposure or some oh my god these eggs were radioactive and we didn't know and everybody's eating them and we're so sorry but we we have a recall on those eggs now so the best way to avoid that is to buy your eggs locally. I guarantee you that unless you live in downtown Manhattan, there's somebody within two miles of you who has chickens in their backyard, or as Amanda just said, get your own damn chickens. That solves the problem. Because if you get six hens, and I'm going to tell you some country boy wisdom here. A lot of people don't know this. You do not have to have a rooster for your hens to lay eggs. You do have to have a rooster for the eggs to hatch. But the, the hens will lay eggs just fine without a rooster. So that means there's no crowing. So even if you're in a suburban neighborhood, you can have two or three hens in your backyard. Nobody will ever know. And you can have fresh eggs every day that were made out of bugs and grass and other good stuff and no salmonella. We had some chickens, but we had a fox too. Yeah. So. <laughs> foxy that fox. Happened. He was a foxy fox and he got our chicks. Mm -hmm. So... Deb's got 13 hens. And see, I guarantee you, people like Deb, she's not going to eat 13 eggs a day when during the laying season. So I guarantee you, she'll sell two or three dozen a week to somebody. Billy's got six hens, plenty of eggs. We only had Chicken Little, and she put out yeah. a lot of eggs. Yeah, yeah. If you get the right breed of chicken, you can have six eggs a day out of six hens all laying season long. And they'll slow down in the winter, but still, you'll have enough eggs saved up in the fridge, and the eggs will stay good in the fridge for months. Okay. Make sure you're, if you're new, you say, hey, hi, I'm new, where you're from, where you're watching from, all that good stuff. And yes. uh, if you're sharing this video with your keto group or your, just your friends, make sure that you have put in the comments that you've shared and the name of your group, too, if you want to. 
Invite more people Excellent. to your keto group. If anybody lives, lives near Donna Thompson, she gets 20 eggs a day. I bet she has some for sale. A lot of eggs. Mm -hmm. So the whole point is, is you want to try to get the minimum amount of your food possible from corporations because corporations are in business to make a profit. And so if they can cut corners by, by washing the eggs in some half-assed chemical or some noxious chemical, they're going to do that until they get caught. And so who knows who dropped the ball because this big corporate entity, I mean, if, you got, if you're selling 207 million eggs, holy crap, you're huge, right? You're too big to care anymore. So buy your eggs locally from some, some teenager or from some grandmother or grandfather who has some chickens in the backyard, and you'll never have to worry about salmonella or any of that crap. If you have 4-H at your local school, most 4-H mm -hmm. kids have chickens. Yep. And if you have 4-H, if you have you a local... Help a little kid make some money. Right. If you have a farmer's market, you can ask those people. If you have a co-op near you, you can ask them, hey, who raises chickens? They'll know. And probably on their bulletin board will be a little postcard that says eggs for sale. And there you go. That way you, you're starving the corporations and you're feeding your local produce producers. And that's a pretty cool thing. I guarantee you in Covington, Tennessee, you can buy some eggs, right? So that's number one is, is buy your eggs locally or just get two or three hens in the backyard and watch out for foxes and grow your own eggs. Yeah. Yeah. If you have a big dog, that's helping. Why don't you like fertilized eggs? I can't tell any difference. I can't either. I can't tell any difference know. at all. I yeah. wouldn't know. But just don't have a, a rooster, and then they won't be fertilized. Um, okay, somebody wanted to talk about, like several people said stalls. Talk about how to get down <clears> to the <throat> stall fast. Okay. The best way. So if you're stalled out on keto, and you think you're, you're eating pretty strict keto, so here's the hierarchy of things you can do. Number one, look for hidden carbs. Because it's so easy. I've, I've fallen victim to this thinking, oh, that's good. That's yeah, whatever. If you're eating a whole bag of almonds, that's probably what's yeah, stolen. You're, yeah, you're probably getting too many carbs. And if you're trusting any products, even if they say Atkins on them, if they say Keto on them, if they say Paleo on them, you've still got to look at the label. You cannot trust anyone with your health, okay? So read the label, and if there's a word on there that you don't know, Google it. That's what Google's for. You can Google it and look it up, okay? I have at least one person a day says, hey, what's this word mean? And I'm like, it means you need to Google it. Sorry. That's what it means, though. <laughs> yeah, that's what Google's for. So, yeah, somebody said the rooster juice is no extra charge on the eggs. That's pretty funny right there. I like that. Kennesaw, Georgia. Hey, how's it going? Somebody asked what was the best keto surprise you found in London. Double cream. That was my best. What was your best? Um, oysters. Really yeah. good oysters. Oh, God. What were those? They were... Um, um, Galway, Scottish. Galway oysters. Oh, my, yeah, Galway. Oh, I can't remember. And that. then there was another local kind. They were Scottish. Galway's in Ireland. So right, but then Irish. they had. We had a dozen Galway and we had a dozen Scottish, and both were divine. Oh my gosh! We didn't even need lemon juice. Didn't even need horseradish. It was, they were just delicious. And but so my good. my favorite was the coffee with double cream in it. Man, that's so good, so full of fat. It was it was amazing. So, okay, so if you've looked at, and you're, you're stalled and you're not, you don't have hidden carbs, next thing you can do is do an 18, 20, 22, 24-hour fast. That's a great way to kick yourself back into ketosis, okay? That's and, the easiest way. I mean, yeah. I say easy, it's not easy, but it's the simplest Simplest, thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Another good way is to go carnivore for two weeks. And I've had a lot more and more patients who have had great luck with just eating pure carnivore diet for two weeks and we can answer questions about that i'm not recommending the carnivore diet i'm just saying for some people that breaks their stall now if you guys have shared this in your keto group or your low carb high fat group give us a, give us a comment so we'll know to thank you for sharing um yeah you could be getting too much protein that could be yep. stalling you out yep. too too much too much protein can kick in something called gluconeogenesis yeah amanda you can get double cream on amazon yes ma'am you can and it is divine. So dramatic. Sandy said that OMAD is not as difficult as it would sound, and I totally agree. It's you kind of naturally start eating mm -hmm. OMAD after mm -hmm. a while. It's you, Nancy, if you're going to try the two-week carnivore, you just eat the fattiest cuts of meat you can find. You cook your meat in either bacon grease or butter so that you're getting extra fat. If you eat eggs, you, try, you, you throw away a white or two, so you're getting a higher fat percentage. Right? 
Christopher says carnivore has him feeling amazing. I've heard that so many times from people. I've been experimenting with it myself, but it's a little too soon for me to say how how amazing I'm going to feel. <laughs> What's the bacon diet? The you bacon, just eat bacon all the time? I don't yeah, know. Heck yeah, that's, that's carnivore. I, mean, I feel like that's probably not a problem, <clears throat> depending on what kind of bacon you're eating. could be high in nitrites. You know, if you're trying to be pure, yeah. then you might not want to do that. I don't even know what it is. I'm just assuming it's eat a lot of bacon. <laughs> Hey, Paola, how's it going? What's another good question? You're if welcome, you're Nancy. eating carnivore, can you, is, are you not getting too much protein? Uh, so if you're eating carnivore, remember you're getting zero carbs. And so when you're getting zero carbs, hey, Kimberly, then basically the, the protein doesn't matter as much, right? But if you're getting 20 carbs a day and then you're eating a ton of protein on top of that, that's a problem. Stella, OMAD is one meal a day. That's the way a lot of people wind up doing their intermittent fasting is they have just a two-hour, one-hour feeding window. And so OMAD stands for one meal a day. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah. And so if you're eating carnivore, you don't have any carbs. It's zero carb unless you're eating some sausage or a hot dog or bologna or something that has some hidden carbs. But if you're eating real meat with the grain still in it, and I don't mean grain like wheat, I mean grain like the, the grain, then you know you're getting zero carbs. So then therefore the protein really doesn't seem to matter for most people because every patient I've had try carnivore, they lost more weight and they feel great. Are you going to try it? Are you going to be a, mm -hmm. do the T-Rex diet? No, I like veggies. You like veggies? I, I like know my you veggies. love them. Kelly Ferguson, have you seen keto help with infertility, diagnosed unexplained infertility? A lot of people are saying that it does. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's any like research behind it, but... I'm working yeah. on a video about PCOS right now that'll be up probably tomorrow evening on the YouTube channel. And I have, in my research, I've seen multiple cases of when a woman with PCOS goes keto, you know what happens? She gets pregnant a few months later. That's that's I've heard that recurring theme. If if you're if you have PCOS and you want to get pregnant, go strict keto, because she's saying undiagnosed, unexplained infertility, not PCOS. Ah, I got you. Now, if, if if it's not PCOS, if you have another reason for the infertility, keto might help. Because just think, if you've got inflammation in a in your fallopian tubes, right, and you start eating an uninflammatory diet like like keto. You might get rid of the inflammation, then your tubes are open again. So it theoretically could help with an un undiagnosed infertility, but I can't say for sure, of course, because if you have some other problem, then it may not help that at all. Hey, Jerry, how's it going? What else is going on here? Yeah, I haven't had a single person tell me that being a carnivore uh, led to kidney stones. I haven't seen any evidence of that at all. You guys have to remember, there are groups of humans like the Inuit, and then there are tribes in Africa that ate nothing but animal products their entire life, okay? And so if, if eating carnivore led to kidney stones, they would, they would be extinct. They would have all died out from kidney stones, right? But they didn't. They're still, they're still in existence. And so anytime you hear an expert say, oh, that'll give you kidney stones or that'll do this or that, Think about it. Well, has there ever been a group of humans on the earth that ate that diet? And did they did they die out from all those terrible things it caused? Or did they do just fine? And the Inuit did just fine eating nothing but animal products in a very, very high fat animal product diet. They did great. So it's kind of silly when you hear an expert say that eating carnivore will give you kidney stones because there's no research to back that up. Helen said, if we have a lot of fat to lose, do we still need to eat a high amount of fat? I've heard that we don't because our bodies need to burn that fat first. Or is that another lie my doctor told me? <laughs> That's a great question. And so what you want to do is use the fat as a tool. You want to use the fat to keep from being hungry. But you're right. If you eat a stick of butter, you have to burn the energy in that fat before you'll start burning the energy on your booty, which is, that's what stored fat is, is is that's stored energy is fat, okay? And so what you want to do is use the minimum amount of fat to keep from being hungry so that you don't wind up eating a bunch of carbs. You want to eat enough fat so you're not hungry because fat won't raise your insulin level, right? And anytime you raise your insulin level, you stop burning the fat on your booty. And so that's why the ketogenic diet works so well. What else? Um... Oh, hey, everybody, if you see a, com or a question in the comments and you already know the answer to it, please address that so that we can get to questions yeah. that 
haven't been yeah. answered. Yeah. You guys who are not new to this, always answer questions for the newbies and be very polite and respectful because they don't know. They're learning. They're new. So teach, treat them like a little brother or a little sister and answer them and don't bully them. Insulin resistance with Picos, no weight loss on the scale. Feel great, but now I feel like nothing will ever work. Feeling discouraged. Do you not hear me? Mm -mm. You didn't hear me. I was that. reading. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa said she's insulin resistant yeah. and she's got Picos. Yeah. She started keto this month, but hasn't had any weight loss, but she feels great. Yeah. Feels like nothing will work. No. The fact that you already feel better, that tells you that the inflammation is going away. Your body took years to get into this condition, right? It's going to take months before you get out of this condition. But you're going to be getting rewards all along if you'll keep doing the diet. Don't get discouraged and quit, okay? Just keep doing keto and you'll keep feeling better and better. And I guarantee you if you start measuring and taking a weekly picture of yourself in front of the mirror right now, a week later, you'll think you haven't changed, but when you compare those pictures, you'll be like, oh my God, yeah, I look different. And my and I'm I'm an, an inch less in the waist or two inches less in the waist. You can keep a diary. Keep a diary. Or a photo yes, diary. Yes, keep a, exactly right. Because a lot of times the scale is very lazy. It doesn't want to move because your body's been at the set weight for so many years. But the inches will start to go almost immediately, and that and the inflammation will start to go. That's why you already feel better. So that's a good indication that what you're doing is working. You just got to be patient and give it enough time. Linda says, I'm at my goal weight and don't want to keep losing. Do I need to change what I'm eating or will my body just know when to stop? That's a beautiful question. Everybody listen up. Very good question. The ketogenic diet will not make you keep losing weight and losing weight until you go to zero and die. Okay? It, it doesn't do that. What it does is it moves you towards your ideal body weight. Okay, so whatever that is, that's where keto is going to move you to. And so if you're if you're somebody who's been anorexic or what, for whatever reason been terribly sick and you've lost weight and you're super, super underweight, eating keto will take you to your ideal body weight. And so it'll help you gain weight. So keto is not going to it's not just about weight loss. It's about fixing your body. Okay, whether you're too fat, whether you're too skinny, keto is going to fix that and move you back towards your baseline because it is the diet that your DNA has been eating for the last 100,000 years. It is nutritionally complete and your DNA knows exactly what to do with the keto diet. Nicole says, can skinny people that need to gain weight do keto to gain weight? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. But now you'll probably want to add in some more carbs. And so you might do a... Veggie uh, carbs, uh, healthy carbs. Mm -hmm. not you might do a high-fat paleo. If you're trying to gain weight and, and, and add in more fruits, that way you're getting the fructose and you're getting the, the sugars along with your fats, and that's going to probably help you gain weight. But I definitely would not eat the standard American diet because, yeah, you'll gain weight, but you also gain disease and suffering and, and long-term complications from that. So if you're, if you're trying to gain weight, maybe slide back into paleo. You Janet. can... Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You do the answering. I'll okay. do the asking. Fine. Okay? You stay in your little... Fine. You stay I'll stay in my lane. lane. Yeah. If I eat 20... Jana says, if I eat 20 carbs and I'm not eating enough veggies, but I'm still in ketosis, is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, you never have to eat if you're not hungry. There's no exact recipe, like formula. You just do what your body right. needs right. you to do. If you're right. in ketosis, then you're doing it right. Probably. Remember that one right there. So... What you want to do, just for you new guys out there and you new gals out there, what you want to do is try to eat super high fat, super low carb, and then kind of let the protein take care of itself, okay? That's a great place to start. Then you can be watching YouTube videos. You can be joining a keto group or two and asking polite questions, and you'll be getting polite answers if you're in the right groups, right? And... That's how you'll learn, but but the, you want to start with really high fat, enough fat that it makes you uncomfortable because you've been told all your life not to eat fat, and then super, super low carb. Keto and pregnancy. Yes. So this is a question I get all the time, and officially I have to recommend if you're pregnant, don't eat the ketogenic diet. I think it's perfectly fine for you to eat a paleo diet or an ancestral diet or a low carb, high fat but we're not going to say to eat a ketogenic diet if you're pregnant or if you're breastfeeding, although I think it's perfectly fine and healthy to do so. I cannot recommend that you do that. But paleo or I'm ancestral... I'm sure there's someone in here right now that yeah. um, oh, ate good. keto yeah. while they Anybody... pregnant. If you did that, yeah. leave it in the comments yeah, and please. answer our good friend here yeah. that asked that question and let her know how you 
you did. Are you pregnant right now yeah, eating keto, now? or have you already had a pregnancy and you ate keto? Do you know somebody that was? Yes, there exactly right. And that's a great way that you can see that they did great, their baby did great, nobody died. Okay, because I know it's 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 scary, it's scary to to think, oh my God, I'm responsible for this life. Should I listen to Dr. Barry and Nisha, or should I just go back to McWendy Kings? So yeah. Kelly asks if keto and Hashimoto's are okay. I have Hashimoto's. I eat yeah. keto. I feel much better than when I was just taking medicine. So, okay. yeah. And I supplement with iodine, too. Yeah. The ketogenic diet plus a drop or two of Lugol solution every day is very, it, it, it calms down the inflammation of Hashimoto's and it tends to make your thyroid function more efficient. And so it really can lessen the symptoms of Hashimoto's and lessen the damage done. And you feel better. And you feel better. Yeah. Like, that's the main. Like, my brain fog is so much better. When we were in London and I ate, like, crap, the brain fog was real. <laughs> her, and his ADD. No, yeah, her brain fog horrible. and my ADD like, we were, like, doubled. The blind and so, the blind she was horrible. in slow motion and I was like, huh? What? Huh? He Did literally would be staring at me and I'd be talking and I'd be like, do you hear what I just said? No. No. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sherry, this is a good question. What is the difference in ketosis and being fat adapted? Mm, good question. There's really not much difference. There are, there are some ketogenic experts who think that you have to eat super high fat for a few weeks to get keto adapted, which basically means to wake your brain and body up and remind it, hey, dummy, you can eat, you can live on the energy in fat, which is ketone bodies. You can burn ketones for energy. You don't have to burn glucose. And uh, there may be some people who need to do that. I think most people, when they wake up after an eight-hour sleep, are almost in ketosis right then. And I, I think I think probably there's no, I don't think you have to do anything for weeks and weeks to get keto adapted. I think you pretty much become keto adapted Fat after adapted. a day or two. Fat adapted, yeah. See, ADD, it's still bad. <laughs> He's still not over it. But some people call it that, keto ad adaptation. Okay, is it okay to take metformin without food? That's a great question. Most diabetic medications you do not want to take unless you eat. And so you're right to be worried about that. But metformin does not ever bottom you out. It doesn't work that way. It works by increasing your insulin sensitivity and decreasing your insulin production. And so it will never bottom you out, even if you don't eat. Now, your blood sugar may get lower, but you're not going to bottom to a dangerous level taking metformin if you have to skip a meal. But if you're, if you're planning on fasting, then you could probably just not take your metformin during the fasting window. But it's still okay if you just like get in a hurry and you forget to eat or something. It's fine. Holly asks, <clears throat> do you drink apple cider vinegar? I do not. Nisha does. Well, um, we drink it in Keterade. We actually may use it in our Keterade, and we keep a, a quart of that in the fridge at all times. I can tell a huge difference when I drink Keterade. I don't know if it's apple cider vinegar or if it's like all the ingredients together because it's got no salt, which is potassium. Yep. It's got apple cider vinegar. It's got magnesium. salt. Yep. It's got magnesium. You yep. can put a probiotic in it if you wanted yep. to. Put it's, a drop or two of Lugol's yeah. iodine so, in it. Could yes. be all of it together, but yeah. I feel like that my my like inflammation is like you I don't really know. Feel I feel better. like I look skinnier. Yeah, she really does look skinnier. She was running around naked earlier, and I was like, inappropriate. Sorry. Anyway, so if you you can use your Keterade during your fasting window if you don't put any sweetener in it, okay? Because we sometimes put stevia in our Keterade. And did you guys? I don't know if you guys know, but we have a recipe on the YouTube channel. Uh, how we make our Keterade, and it literally costs a quarter for a liter. It's very cheap. Is it it's, even a quarter? It's probably like I, I'm just saying that. It's probably five Everybody it's probably thought five that was cents, really yeah. funny that you just said that, what you said. A quarter for a liter? No, what, what? you said before oh. that. Do you remember what you said before <laughs> that? Yeah, I was, hoping, I was hoping that you would let that go, but anyway, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Tammy asks for examples for the beginner. Examples of what? Be a little more specific. Yeah, ask us a specific question, and we shall answer um, Somebody said, love your keto aid. Mimi, I don't think eating a bunch of strawberries is a bad mess up. Uh, Mimi just said, I ate a bunch of strawberries today. Did I mess up? Think about that, guys. First of all, what a victory that is. She's worried because she ate too many strawberries, right? Instead of saying, I ate too many donuts, you know, she ate too many strawberries. So first of all, congratulations, Mimi, on improving your diet so much that you're worried about eating too much, too many strawberries. That's pretty freaking cool right there, okay? <laughs> Secondly, if you ate too many strawberries, it may have knocked you out of ketosis, but 
It's not that big of a deal because in a few hours of fasting, like when you go to bed tonight, when you wake up in the morning, it'll be like it never happened. Now, if you eat a bunch of strawberries every single day, it may slow down your weight loss. But having an occasional treat like that every now and then, I think is perfectly fine. Oh, my back. Uh, we get iodine off Amazon. Somebody asked, I can't find iodine. Where do you get it? It's on Amazon. We have the link leave somewhere. Link. I'll leave it in the yeah, description. We'll leave a link. Can uh, keto cause anxiety? Carlos, absolutely. I've seen the exact opposite. I've seen the ketogenic diet. I've seen people be able to come off of their anxiety medications because they're eating a ketogenic diet. I, have you heard anybody say it made their anxiety worse? Mm -mm. I haven't heard anybody say that. I've heard people say it made their anxiety better. It made their depression better. It is, I've even heard several um, of the uh, veterans said that their PTSD was better when they ate strict keto. I've heard that multiple times now. So I, that's very, makes my heart happy to know that there may be a way that the vets uh, and our patriots can eat a ketogenic diet and make their PTSD less severe. Isn't that awesome? Um, somebody asked, what's the best way to start the keto diet? Simple. simple. Very simple. Yeah, I have a really good blog post and pretty yes. good shopping video on my YouTube about uh, what you should get when you're starting to eat keto from the grocery store that's on the YouTube. And then I have a meal plan, but it's not really a meal plan. It's very, very simplified. Some of y'all probably read it. But um, go check that out and it'll help you because it's basically till it's it simplifies it don't, not dumb. It's not for dumb people. It's for us people that are just normal, normal people, people yeah. Yeah. who don't need like all the science. I just need you to tell me what I need to do. Right. Because normal people are not <laughs> nutritionists. They're not dietitians. You just want to know what's going to work so I can get on with my life. And so that I think that's a very valid question. Um, what's the first thing you would say if you want to start keto tomorrow? What should they, should they add stuff? Should they subtract stuff? What should they do? Just go no carb, no carb, go, no carb for the first seven days, and supplement and make get a, the fat bomb recipe that I have too, which mm -hmm. is really easy. It's strawberry cheesecake because it feels like you're cheating. Yep. So make you some strawberry cheesecake fat bombs to have in the refrigerator, and just eat meat and um, things with no carbs for Lots seven days, Lots and get fat. and I think that that honestly will help you get fat adapted. Mm -hmm. And then the second week, start intermittent fasting with bulletproof coffee and then by the third week i think everything should be easier and then you can start making like counting maybe your carbs yeah if you want to start yeah. counting macros you can and so i think that's great advice and so you could go super meat heavy with fatty cuts of meat bacon cook all your meat in bacon grease or mm -hmm. butter and then so and, and now if you're if you're just living in a standard american kitchen right now and you're like yeah i want to do this but i don't know where to start that's great advice another thing you could do is just get rid of everything with sugar in it and get rid of all the grains and get rid of all the inflammatory vegetable oils okay so it, it, honey has got sugar in it agave nectar has sugar sugar has sugar any kind of dessert, any kind of treat, any kind of candy, you don't need that in your house. That that crap is slow poison. Throw that away. If you have bread, if you have corn, if you have rice, if you have any kind of grain like that, throw that away. You don't need that. If you have uh, potatoes that you're going to cook and eat, that's just nothing but pure starch. That will definitely cause you to gain weight. Throw that away. If you have canola oil, if you have corn oil, if you have soybean oil, throw those away. Cook with butter, cook with lard, cook with bacon grease, cook with avocado oil. Those are good fats that, that make sense that your body understands. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those are some good, quick ways. And I'm also working on a, a simple start keto uh, video that will be up in two or three days on the YouTube channel. Are you channel. doing a book, too? Yeah. Somebody asked. Yes, yes, I am. I'm, I, I'm getting my ADD brain wrapped around <laughs> sitting down like I did with lies my doctor told me, which, I, you know, looking back now, I'm like, how did I do that? How did I write that freaking book? Because that just took a lot of focus time. And I'm, you didn't talk to your wife for a year. That's how you wrote it. It's horrible. Was you it really not bad? Do it this time. No, yeah. I think I've learned enough tricks from and and from learning from mistakes last time. I don't think it'll be as bad this time. It better not be, because I'll throw down. I'll throw <laughs> your computer in the yard. Oh, 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 that will slow down production. Sherry, um, she's a Patreon. Oh, hey, Sherry. Okay, so you get an e visit because you're one of the levels. All you have to do is download the e visit app. And um, add him 
and you that's how you can do your face to face yep. you just go on there and you can put i guess put in the comments that mm -hmm. i'm a patron and then that way you won't get charged no well when you when we face to face <laughs> you can just yeah. tell me you're a patron and i want because i hit the charge button on evv <coughs> at the end yeah at the end <coughs> and so i decide when you get charged um if you guys don't know what evisit is it's actually a facetime application that's hipaa compliant it's very secure it's as, as secure as online banking banking and there's an app on iphones and there's an app on androids that you can download Load. Pick me as your doctor, sign up, and then you can e-visit with me face-to-face. -face. As so a you, coach, if you haven't been to the clinic. That's right. If, if you've been to the office as my patient, then I can be your doctor on e-visit. If you've never been to the office and seen me in person, then I can do medical coaching for you and answer a ton of questions. And there you go. So I, a lot of people may not know about If that. you'll send me a message after this, I'll send you the e-visit yes, link. Yes, definitely. Yeah, that we'll way fix you, you won't have to look for it. Absolutely. Oh, man, Stephanie. <laughs> I've been thinking about this. She said, I added blueberries to the strawberry cheesecake fat bombs. Oh, my mm. God. So good. Imagine yes. that. And a keto pie crust. I'm working on a keto yes. pie crust recipe because me and my girlfriends are like just like keto-aholics at this point. And we really think that we could figure out a cheesecake, like keto cheesecake, because mm. cheesecake's mm. basically keto yeah. anyways. Yeah. So You could do the yeah. almond crust. and. Well, I was going to do half almond, half... You'll see. Ooh, I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. It's going to have blueberries. And strawberries. Oh, my yeah. God. How oh much is an e-visit? It's $60 so if you're not if, if For patient, medical coaching, yeah. it's $60 per 10 minutes. And we can usually get everything talked about in 10 minutes. As you guys may have gathered, I can get to the point pretty quickly. And then if you have been to the office and seen me face-to-face, -face, it's only $45. And so I've actually had people drive in from out of state because they're not happy with the doctors in their area, see me in the office, and then I can be their doctor remotely. Hey, Jessica. Jessica's a patron. Jessica Link. I know, I added them in the group today. I know all of these oh, people because oh, I've you added them in the you group did. today. There's Isabel. And if I haven't added you yet, uh, you can become a patron. We'll put a link up here. You just go to patreon.com slash KendiBerryMD, I think right, it is. that's it. Um, what, oh, yeah. If I haven't added you yet, I'm, I promise I'm getting to it. It's complicated. Oh, Miss Karina, you have to request the e-visit. So download the e-visit app on your phone and then... You request do it at me. your convenience. Yeah, you sign you yeah. sign up and and you request an e visit with me. I'm not, I can't reach out to you guys. You got to reach out reach out to me. And then when you're doing the e visit, you'll say I'm a Patreon, I'm a patron, and then I won't charge. That's how you get your free e visit if you're a fifty dollar patron. Oh, I'm coming out of state. Oh, Where Janet? are you coming from, Janet? Where are you coming from, Janet? Elizabeth said worth your sixty bucks. Oh, thank you very much, Elizabeth. Can a Canadian become a patient? Well, I mean, if you fly here, I guess. Yeah, maybe. if you come, if you see me in the office, I don't know of any legal reason why you, I can't be your doctor. Something about cheesecake. Ooh, cheesecake. Yeah, you guys, let's Already talk about cheesecake. Already made the cheesecake with a cake bottom and chocolate topping. It was delicious. I'm getting on there. Oh, oh. hey, Sue, how's it going? Okay, guys, if you have any questions, ask us questions right now is the time. And then, are we going to go live in the, the patron-only group later tonight? Tuesday. Or Tuesday? Okay. It's for you Patreons, we'll go patrons. I don't know how to say that. Whatever. <laughs> it's so confusing. Every Tuesday is when we'll go live in there, just for you guys. Yep. Connection. Oh, there we're back what? now. I don't know. It said it was trying to reconnect. Lily's Chocolate. Someone asked if they are okay. I've heard it's fine. I think the carb count is pretty low in there, and there's no added sugar. And they make a lot of different stuff. But I've seen a lot of keto recipes call for it, and the carb count is really low, so I think that it's fine. Well, I'm located in Camden, Tennessee, which is kind of between Memphis and Nashville. That's where right the office is. Right off I-40, the interstate. Mm -hmm. It's right off the interstate. Yep, yep, yep. So you guys are welcome <gasps> to come see me. Look at people that have appointments with you. I love it. Oh, yeah. I love it. Took me off clip aside. Yeah, no, I took off my edge. Well, Corina, go go back and, and re-pledge at that level, and then now you know what to do, because I promise you, you'll get it. And you can actually, if you'll... Maybe if you'll, you need to update the information on there. No, That's if you'll e-visit with me, Corina, I'll, I won't charge you, because I remember your name. I remember you being at that level. So if you'll, if you'll download the e-visit app, I'll definitely give you your free e-visit, because I remember you being at that pledge level. Ron, I am not mentoring any other doctors at this point. Doctors are like mountain lions. They basically are, are, very, are loners. They don't like to be told what to do, and they also don't like to, to ever reveal that they don't know everything about everything. 
I'm one of the very rare doctors who will say, hmm, I don't know, let me, let me research that. Most docs, you'll never hear say that because they don't want to reveal the chinks in their armor of knowledge. And so no doc's going to reach out to me and say, hey, could you teach me this keto stuff? And you really shouldn't have to because all he's going to have to do is read 20 or 30 articles uh, at pubmed.gov about the ketogenic diet. Watch a few YouTube videos. He can watch all of my YouTube videos on my channel. And then he, that's it. It's not that hard because a doctor already has a, a bedrock foundation of biochemistry and physiology and cell and molecular biology. And so when you start talking about the, the logic of the ketogenic diet, if they remember any of their biochemistry, they're going to be like, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, yeah, no, I get it. That makes perfect sense. And so any doctor who watches a few YouTube videos is going to pick this up and go, yep, I get it. That makes perfect sense. And then they can start mentoring their own patients. And I think a lot of doctors are quietly learning about it. And if you'll ask your doctor, you might be shocked that your doctor already knows about it and may even be doing it himself, and he's just not recommending it to patients yet because he's still experimenting. That wouldn't surprise me a bit. Janice, you can drink tea instead of coffee, hot tea, yeah. if you don't like coffee. Um, I'm drinking hot tea right now. Yeah. You don't have to drink coffee for bulletproof coffee. It can be bulletproof tea. It can... I mean, it could be bulletproof. What else is there? It could be anything with just a little bit of fat. Water. Yeah, <laughs> you can put um, you can put a little bit of heavy cream in your Keterade. I don't know how that would taste, but that would be that would be bulletproof Keterade. Ew. Don't yeah, do that. I know, right? Somebody asked about keto and rheumatoid arthritis. So, Whitney, rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune condition, and it is an inflammatory condition, right? So the ketogenic diet calms down inflammation and it calms down your immune system and makes it makes it smart again so it's not ignorantly attacking its own body. And so I've had multiple people with both osteoarthritis, with psoriatic arthritis, and with rheumatoid arthritis have improvement in their joint inflammation and pain when they're eating a ketogenic diet. Yeah, definitely. Uh, muscle cramps. You can Quinine. take that one. You, you can take that one right there. <laughs> the, what, what is it called? The uh, called tonic, water, tonic water. Tonic water with Sugar-free tonic water. And that really helps. Magnesium also you, helps. It helps with the um, restless leg syndrome too. Yep. And then also uh, new salt, no salt, or light salt has potassium. So you can get potassium, magnesium, and quinine. One of those three or a combination, and you will have zero cramps. Bone broth bulletproof. Yep. You could have... Which is basically broth if, with... Yeah, that's Extra right. Fat. If you make your own bone broth. Now, if you buy it at the store, you got to watch for hidden carbs. You can... Look at this right here. Wow. Penny said, my daughter has MS and keto is helping her symptoms disappear. Yep. Yeah. MS is an autoimmune neurological condition, and I've had multiple patients with MS, with OCD, with ADD, um, with Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia get improvement of their symptoms with the ketogenic diet. I've seen it multiple times. Nova Scotia, Canada. Hey, that's a long way away. <laughs> Uticaria. Um, Uticaria is, is an, is an inf inflammatory condition, right? It's caused by the histamine release in the skin. And so anything that's uninflammatory is going to make it better. The ketogenic diet it may not cure your urticaria, but it's going to make it better. Elizabeth, you can add stevia to your bulletproof coffee, but it's going to break your fast. So if you're fasting, then don't. But if you're not fasting, then go for it. Thanks, Dwayne. Um, tonic water is loaded with sugar. Some of it is. Some yeah, you can get sugar-free tonic water, though. You're, but you're absolutely right. Uh, we've switched over now. We used to have gin and tonic all the time, and I didn't realize for a long time that tonic water had so many freaking carbs in it because it doesn't taste sweet. And so one day we were at the grocery, and I was just looking at the bottle, and I was like, what the hell? This brand's got a bunch of carbs. And then I started reading. It's like, oh, it all has carbs. That's great. Stupid. Okay. Yeah. So I didn't realize that. So now we have gin and soda, soda water, club soda, because it has zero carbs, zero sugar. If you don't have cramping, is there another need to take magnesium? And is some, that something I can take without direction of a physician? Yeah. You can get magnesium drops. Put a link to that, to mm -hmm. the good drops. Um, and you can take it at bedtime if you have trouble sleeping because it'll help you sleep. My son, Jonathan, he's in his, his 20s, and he has trouble sleeping if he doesn't take 400 milligrams of magnesium every night. And I think he just takes a gel cap. But you can also, I like the drops because you can just mix it with a liquid and drink it. Um, 
Uh, you can take up to a thousand milligrams of magnesium if you have normal kidney function and you won't need the intervention of a doctor. It's just a supplement up to that level. Any more than that and you, you need to see a doc and get your lab work checked and make sure that it's still okay. Can you add cinnamon to Bulletproof Coffee and it not break your fast as long as it doesn't have a sweetener in yeah, it? Yeah, as long as it's real cinnamon and doesn't have any carbs, any sugar, I think that's fine just for flavoring. Should you fast every day? You it, can if you want to. It depends. I usually do. I usually fast for at Unless least six, 16 hours a day. The other diabetic, right? Then you should right. If you're a type 1 diabetic, then you need to work work with your doctor as far as keto and fasting goes. But anybody else can fast every day if you want Butter to. Butter in your coffee, break your fast. No. No. Why doesn't it break your fast? Who knows the answer to oh, that? Okay. I'll shut up. Do you know? You know. No, it's fine. okay. It's fine. You can, no, you can be devil's I'll advocate. You're like, I know. Um, so the reason that butter in your coffee or MCT oil in your coffee doesn't break your fast is because it does not raise your insulin level. When, you're, when you eat carbs, your insulin does this. When you eat protein, it does that. When you eat fat, it does that. Okay, And so when your insulin stays low, you're able to burn the fat on your booty, in your belly, and most importantly, in your liver. Uh, some people say you drink BB, PBC, BPC and it'll break your fast. I think that's if you put too much cream in it. That's yeah. Heavy cream will break your fast. Heavy if you cream too much. has a protein, has a little protein in it. And for some people, including me, I feel like it, it, it stalled me out. So I don't use it anymore when I'm fasting. But during my feeding window, I still use it because it's freaking delicious. Yeah, Kerrygold butter and sea salt in your coffee. That's what I've been doing for a few months and I freaking love it. It's delicious. Ooh, so the, John okay. Kaufman, if okay, you're watching, ahead. you pledged 20 bucks just now. So. Hey, thanks, John. Ooh, so Elizabeth out. said, no, wait, who said that? Connie. Connie said, no, that's not it. Okay. Holly said. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was it. If you would just let me read them off to you, that would This is a good one. I'm just, I was fixing to read oh, that one to sorry. you. I've got a good picker. I'm good. Yeah, you're good. That's a good one. Okay. Why would Stevie break a fast? It's not supposed to raise your insulin. No, it doesn't raise your blood sugar. But there's something called the cephalic insulin response, which is an evolutionary thing left over from 10,000 years ago. Because when you picked a ripe peach and you bit it and started chewing it, it tasted sweet. And that makes your insulin level go up, even before you swallow the peach. They actually did a research study, and they would give people saccharin water. And they didn't even swallow it. They just swished it in their mouth for a minute and spit it out. That would raise their insulin level because of the sweetness in your, in your mouth, on your tongue, it elevates your insulin a little. Maybe not a lot, but a little. And so if you're right on the verge of stalling, that could be the thing that's stalling you. And so if any of you guys are stalled out and you're putting any kind of sweetener, even sugar-free, in your BPC, stop using the sweetener and see if that won't help. I cannot access your video. I'm able to watch other videos on Facebook. That's weird. You should be able to watch this. It's on the public page. I don't. When you're watching it, you're commenting. I'm confused. I don't know. Which Does it the caffeine and PVC, BPC, I can't today, I don't know, raise your insulin? Does caffeine raise the insulin? Probably not. I've never seen any research that it does, and I'll tell you something else I've been reading about. Uh, I was talking to Carl Franklin. He's a friend of mine. He's, in, he's he, one of the two keto dudes, and he found a research study that carbonation might raise your insulin level. And so I'm reading about that, and that's going to make me very sad if that's the case, because then my Perrier and Seddon Pellegrino may be out the window, because I certainly don't want to stall just because of having some bubbly drink. <laughs> but I don't know for sure about caffeine yet. I don't think so. And I also still don't think so about carbonation, but I'm, I'm looking into both of those. And so I if I find know. out anything, I'll let you guys know. Somebody asked if they could use half and half. No. No, it's it, it's not enough fat. It's got it still has it's protein. Got some protein. Yep, in still it, has yeah. protein. Somebody asked how much it costs to be a patron. You can be a patron for a buck a month. It's you can or you can and if you want to be part of our our private patron only Facebook group, then it's three bucks a month. That's it. That's all it is. <sighs> okay, sleepy. You getting sleepy? Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Somebody ordered a copy of your book. Penny Thanks, ordered guys. a copy of your book for her doctor. Hope he doesn't get mad. <laughs> I don't think I don't think that um, toothpaste is sweet enough to break your fast unless you're using like the kid flavored super sweet kind. If you're just using regular peppermint, I don't think it'll break your fast. Yeah, I know, Ron. Please, please don't let carbonation turn out to to raise your insulin. That's level. how I gave up cokes. 
Yeah, yeah. I know, me too. So many people got rid of their Coke or their Pepsi or Dr. Pepper habit by drinking San Pellegrino with a little bit of uh, salt and a little bit of maybe even a little sweetener. Y'all that are asking about Patreon, we'll put a link in the description yeah, yeah, yeah. when we post it and edit it yeah. and everything. And to, the, to our patrons who are watching, thank you so much. You guys made it possible for Nisha to go part-time PRN so that she can help me more to help you guys more. And so, oh, Judy, the, the book, Lies My Doctor Told Me, is on Amazon in paperback and in Kindle version. And soon, soon. there will be an audible version, an audio version of Lies My Doctor Told Me, read by the right honorable Carl Franklin of the Two Keto Dudes. How cool is that, right? I read your book and loved it. Passed it on to family members. Awesome. Oh, thank you so much. Ontario, Canada. We have a lot of people from Canada. I know. I love What I love causes stomach rumbling? You just posted about that today. <laughs> stomach rumbling is actually not rumbling. It's not rumbling in your stomach. It's gas moving around in your intestines. And it does not mean you're hungry. I, and the reason I said that is because we were watching something. Oh, it was a commercial on a YouTube video I was watching. This woman's sitting there on the couch and her, stom her stomach goes, and she's like, well, I must be hungry. And I'm like, what bull crap? That doesn't mean you're hungry, but the corporation would love it if you believe that that meant you were hungry. And so that's why I posted it on the Facebook page. If you hear grumblies in your stomach, that does not mean that you're hungry. It just means you're going to poot later. That's all that means. Sorry, but it's true. Well, we made it. We almost made it without talking about Putin. <laughs> Last question. Uh, Mike said, Dr. Bird says not too much caffeine, but Thomas DeLauer says caffeine is fine. I tend to agree with uh, Thomas DeLauer in this case. I have always loved caffeine and, and, and have drank coffee since I was a little kid. Uh, and I, I, therefore, I've looked at the research multiple, multiple times. And when I was in my family practice residency, we delivered babies. And so I had a lot of pregnant women in, our, in my obstetrical practice. And so they would ask me about caffeine. And let me tell you guys, even the research can't prove that caffeine's bad for pregnant women. Okay, and in South American and Central American countries, kids start drinking coffee when they get off the breast, like literally. And they're tall, beautiful people. It doesn't stunt their growth. All that's a myth, I think, made up by my grandmother because she forbid me from drinking coffee. I had well, to sneak. You're tall, so. I had to sneak and drink my coffee. But there's no research that shows that caffeine is bad for humans. And I can't find anything that makes me think it raises your insulin level and breaks your fast either. So. How's that, guys? Was that a good live? And you guys keep leaving your comments, and we're going to put some tags or some links to the stuff we talked about in the comments, and then we'll be live in the patron group Tuesday. Tuesday. At what time? You said 7. 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So you patrons, join us, and, and we'll answer go, every I'm question you got. I'm going to put a post up where you guys can leave questions. That way, when we go live, we can just go ahead and yes, start answering yes, questions. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Thanks for supporting us. Thanks for buying the book. And don't forget, there's an audible book coming, Lies My Doctor Told Me. You ready to hit the button? Peace. Peace out. Later. Love you.